let's move on. We already did the hard work. So this shouldn't be uh, that much hard for us to understand stacked hourglass network. It's about designing a neural network that is good at solving the human pose estimation problem. And then there is a question uh, in the chat, is this kind of like object detection? It is close, but not yet. Object detection is about putting bounding boxes around your objects. Here is about detecting key points. Actually, there are some algorithms for object detection that uh, rephrase that problem as key point detections, maybe the left side of your box and the right side of your box, or locating the center of the box and uh, some other key points for the box. So yeah, you're close, but there are some other better algorithms for detection, putting bounding boxes. But yes, it's about detection. So let's do, what are the applications I mentioned? It's about human computer interaction and animation. This is the neural network architecture. The idea is that you need to have that multi-stage or multiple stages framework. That's useful. Let's keep it. The other one is uh, you need to do this. You need to have this uh, shrinking and then expanding nature for your architecture because not only you care about the global context of your image, but also about the local details. We had the same problem when we were doing segmentation. And then at the same time, this multi-stage was helping us in the previous two papers. So let's keep that nature here as well. If you look at uh, pose estimation results, they are always gonna show you this image, but underneath that image are these predictions, the heat map predictions. You're locating the neck, uh, left elbow, the wrist, right knee, right ankle. And that's how you are detecting them. So you're predicting heat maps. And as I mentioned, the motivation for this hourglass type of architecture is you want to capture information at every scale, the small scales and the large scales. And why would you do that? Because some local evidences are essential for you to identify faces and hands. At the same time, having the final pose estimate requires you to understand the full body, look at the global context where to put everything in the correct location. That's why you contract, expand, contract, expand multiple times. And what you, is, what you see there is exactly what you see down here with convolution operations and these residual connections. So it's exactly what you see up there. You first contract, you expand, add some residual connections. And these convolutions are, you for, are for you to change the dimension whenever it is needed before adding and each box that you see here is just a residual connection of this form. The input goes in, you first do one by one convolution, then a three by three, another one by one convolution, and then you add your residual connection. At the same time, you're gonna do intermediate supervision. Whenever your stack, uh, your hourglass is finished, maybe the first stage, you supervise it. Then you have another loss here, another loss here, and another loss at the end. And these are all mean squared error loss, where you are comparing the predicted heat map to the ground truth heat map, which you obtain using Gaussians. And then these are some qualitative results. This is some of these predictions are really tough and people could be in unnatural positions. The metric that you're gonna use is percentage of correct key points. This is the percentage of detections that are gonna fall within a threshold of the ground truth and that threshold is according to your normalized distance. And that's what I was mentioning. You can look at your normalized distance. The further you go to the right in this graph, you are being more relaxed about the location, the precise location of the uh, key point. And then usually a method is better if it's up to the left of other curves. For instance, this one is detecting the wrists and elbows, which are really hard to detect. Is detecting them really good. And in terms of comparing this model to the previous one that we just covered, it's giving you much better results, okay? That's a flick data set. You can have the same or similar results on MP2 data sets. These are good data sets to explore. Any questions about this? Okay, perfect.